Okay. So in this appendix, we are discussing the um, canonical manifolds of mappings, and uh, we introduced them uh, in an earlier lecture. Let me just recall what the canonical manifold of mappings is. So um, we have manifolds K and M, and a smooth manifold structure on the smooth mappings from K to M is called canonical if on one hand the underlying topology is the compact open C infinity topology and for each uh, C infinity manifold which might be infinite dimensional and, uh, and smooth mapping which goes from our uh, third manifold N into the C infinity mappings. Um, the mapping is smooth if and only if the associated map, so this F wedge, um, of the, of the following signature. So if you have n times k, so on the Cartesian product of n and k with values in m, um, and you're sending x, y to f of x, and then you evaluate the uh, smooth mapping f of x is in y. So this should be a smooth mapping if and only if uh, the mapping into this manifold of mappings is smooth. Okay, so uh, this letter requirement is just uh, so we are baking in the exponential law for smooth mappings so recall that we have proved uh, the exponential law for uh, in, a, in a certain situation basically when we're going into open subsets of uh, locally convex spaces um, and so let's let's see a first example of this um, type of canonical manifold structure so um, in what in what comes now and in everything which will follow K will always be a compact manifold, and if I write E, then at least uh, in this section we are, um, E will be, now be a locally convex space. Later we will discuss bundles, and I also write E for a bundle, but at the moment it's a locally convex space. So, and what we have seen is basically that the C, uh, the compact open C infinity topology turns the C infinity functions from our compact manifold with values in the locally convex space itself into a locally convex space with the pointwise operations. So we can pointwise add and scalar multiply functions. And we also proved, and that was quite, uh, quite a bit to do, uh, that the exponential law holds for such spaces. So this means that the C infinity functions from a compact manifold with values in a locally convex space, they form a canonical manifold. Uh, so in, in this new language we have here. And so far, um, these, um, C, uh, these locally convex spaces of smooth functions from a compact manifold into a locally convex space, they're the only example we have seen of canonical manifolds. And what I want to discuss in this, um, in this lecture, I want to sketch a little bit the ingredients which go into the um, proof uh, that um, if you have C infinity functions from a compact manifold with values in uh, an arbitrary manifold, so not necessarily a locally convex space, but might be a non-compact uh, manifold, that those are also, or they, those things form a canonical manifold. Okay, however, before we do this, before we uh, see how we can generalize the situation from uh, a target being a locally convex space to a manifold, let us study the situation a little bit. And let's see um, which ingredients or what structures on the locally convex manifold we have actually uh, sorry on the locally convex vector space we have actually exploited in constructing our canonical manifold structure so and basically one of the ingredients i mean why this is a vector space is the pointwise addition uh, of functions so if we have two functions say here the um, blue one and the green one in this uh, in this little um, picture. So we basically uh, can compare them. So we want to know what is the difference between say the function, uh, let's say, uh, let's say this blue function is called G and the green function is called F. So we can then, of course, take the difference F minus G. And um, we see uh, that basically, I mean, in this vector space setting, so the difference between the two functions is a, ve is a vector field. So we have exploited here just that we can pointwise add, uh, add and, or in this case, subtract um, functions from each other to compute their difference, and the difference is a vector field. So the vector field here in yellow has the meaning if I attach um, the, um, the function value of the vector field at each point of the green function, then I go from my green graph to the blue one. So basically, um, this is what 
you can think of how this uh, how this locally convex spa vector space works. I mean, on one hand, we have we have the with the add uh, operation or the um, taking the difference of these two things. So we can compare functions, and then the, what the role of the topology is is basically it's measuring the distance between the functions, and of course also since we have smooth functions of um, its derivatives, right? So. Um, on one hand, I mean, since we since we already said we only have a canonical manifold if we have the compact open C infinity topology, basically the topology will always be given. So there's no leeway in the topology. However, uh, we see at least when we want to compare functions, we have used several things here from the topology uh, from the locally convex space. On one hand, we have used the vector space operation. And uh, so what we're actually measuring in our compact open C infinity topology are these vector fields, which are giving us the difference between the two functions. So we are basically measuring uh, the function values of this vector field, for example, and also um, how big the derivatives get. And now, if we think about it, we want to generalize this from uh, the case where we are at a vector space, we want to generalize this to a manifold. And then we are immediately facing um, several obstacles. On one hand, if we put a manifold on the right-hand side, so if you're looking at the C-infinity functions from K with values in a manifold, then obviously there's no addition operation on the manifold, at least not a canonical one we have there. Um, okay. So um, thinking a little bit about this, we can of course try to remedy this. I mean, every manifold admits charts and why not just compose with charts and uh, take the difference then in these charts. And well, while, while we're at it, we, uh, when, when we do this difference in charts, then we can basically evaluate sort of the, we get a vector field then on an open subset of, um, of our manifold and we can measure perhaps this vector field. Thinking a little bit more about this, this immediately raises several questions. If I compose with some charts, the question is, okay, what, what do we actually measure here? Does this depend on the charts? Um, can I make this perhaps independent of charts? And um, so what the uh, more crucial problem apart from this uh, is this actually well-defined problem is, is uh, when we look at uh, the whole picture here, so we had uh, we have these functions f and g, and we can compute their overall distance on the whole uh, domain of definition of f and g by just looking at the uh, the difference of the vector field. So in a, in a certain sense, this vector field difference here, of the yellow one, so this measures um, the global difference from f uh, of f and g. If we, are, um, if we compose with charts and do the same trick in the charts, then we can usually only hope to capture part of the picture. I mean, because you, uh, when, when you have a function taking values in a manifold, nothing is forcing this function to take values in one chart. So we can never have this global comparison we can do in the vector field, uh, uh, sorry, in the vector space case, where um, we don't have to deal with charts. So in a way, charts are, uh, or at least uh, there's a the huge complication coming in with charts. So it's not clear how to make this uh, construction well-defined. And also, in a certain sense, it's not clear um, if you want to switch the chart from, uh, so you, we want a global picture and we basically want to say, okay, here uh, we've done it in one chart and now we are changing to a neighboring chart which has an overlap, then it's not clear whether um, with this operation of changing the chart from one to another can be made into some sort of smooth operation on uh, this, uh, this um, topological space of C infinity functions from K with values in M. So the, the upshot of this discussion is, um, that at least without any further ideas, we probably don't have a good idea of how to make all of this work in charts. And in the end, it will turn out that the charts of the target manifold we are mapping into will not be too useful to actually construct uh, such a canonical manifold structure on the C-infinity functions. Okay, instead, uh, the, uh, there's another approach of what you should do. And as I said, the charts of the target manifold have not, uh, not much to do with it. 
And this approach uh, is doing the following. So what this suggests to do is we basically uh, replace the addition of E with some structure which lets us um, com uh, compute a measure of difference between the graphs of two functions. And this uh, structure is supposed uh, to give us something like in the vector space case where we have a global vector field which measures the distance. And um, so we, we will introduce an additional structure which allows us to uh, compute uh, this global difference as some sort of vector field. And this is sort of the second part uh, what, of what we need to do. We need to take care of what do, what do I mean by uh, some sort of vector field. Well, so um, recall, let me just go back once. Uh, so we have these two functions f and g, and we compute the distance, uh, difference as f minus g. And um, so at, uh, at the level of vector spaces, where we can always translate stuff, this is, uh, this is perhaps um, uh, a nice uh, thing to do. However, on a manifold, uh, we cannot necessarily translate these things. I mean, the, the role of these arrows here is, uh, basically, if I attach them to um, a point here, see, just that I made the sign mistake, so it should be minus f minus g, okay. Um, so if I attach these arrows to f uh, or to a point on the graph, then the arrow basically points to the corresponding point on the graph of g. Um, and in the vector space setting, it doesn't matter where, uh, where I write these things because I can always translate them to the right point. However, on a manifold, it, uh, we have no idea what, what we could mean by a translation. And so uh, not only do we want to um, uh, replace the addition with some structure which allows us to make a, or to, to give a global difference between these things, but the vector fields we will get is, uh, uh, or we get vector fields which should actually be uh, um, attached to some functions. So usually when you have a vector field, uh, you know that this is a smooth mapping from the manifold into its tangent bundle, such that if we project it down, we get the identity. In this case, we want a vector field along the given function f. So we want that uh, uh, if we project down the vector field or the section of uh, the bundle, we will formulate this in terms of uh, sections of certain vector bundles, then we want to get uh, the graph of, uh, of, the, of the function um, uh, we want to attach this vector field to. So in, in a certain sense, we need to uh, describe what we mean uh, by, by this kind of vector field and how do we topologize these vector fields uh, or these types of smooth functions as a locally convex space because in the end, these vector fields or these um, uh, attached to certain functions, they should be our model spaces for uh, our manifolds of mappings. And this is what we will do now. So first of all, I will introduce a, a structure which re replaces the addition on E with something suitable for manifolds. And then uh, we will study these spaces of, vector f uh, of uh, certain vector fields which, you, uh, which we get um, and see uh, how this works out. Okay, any questions so far? Doesn't seem to be the case, so let's uh, 